so it is the 26th of March 2018, and we said all ecosystems, all biological communities are these delicate balances, and parasites can really change that balance. It's one more relationship that exists. And I will put this slide up on, um, I'll put the pictures up on Classroom so you can snag the pictures at least. They're great pictures. And in both cases, they show at least one organism that is affected by a parasite. <clears throat> so as you're copying, I'll read it and then I'll shut up. Um, some parasites cause morphological, structural changes in their hosts. Some parasites cause behavioral changes in their hosts. <clears throat> These changes can either impair the host's fitness for their niche, or it can improve the host's fitness for these, their niche. How could these changes alter whole communities? Could they? Um, this frog has got some pretty serious malformations. It's got three extra legs. Um, now, I haven't watched a frog with five back legs try to swim, but I'm going to guess it's not pretty. Um, and these kind of go off in all directions. The joints don't look like they're necessarily all that functional. This is the result of a parasite. Um, Gesundheit. More common in northern waters. Um, and this is a little, boy, it looks like a wood frog to me. It could be a pickerel frog. I'd have to, I'd have to go back and read the article again. This parasite affects frogs in their early developmental stages, and it damages tissues that become body parts. And when those tissues are damaged, um, now some of these frogs, interestingly enough, it's weird, and I, I would have to, again, read more about the exact way it works. Some of them don't have enough legs, and some of them have too many. So it's, it's strange that it can work in both ways, but it, it comes down to the DNA that codes for building a leg, getting turned off or turned on incorrectly. So do you think that this particular frog that's been affected by this little parasite. I think it's a trematode. I think it's a flatworm. Um, do you think that it would have an easy time getting away from its predators? No. no. I'm going to say it's got a real serious disadvantage. Now, if enough individuals of this one species are affected by a parasite like this and have these kind of morphological changes, do you think that that might affect the number of this species that we see? Yeah. We, I mean, to the, to the, in the extreme case, if we think about it, we could lose the species in this community. <clears throat> That's not good. Because when one species is lost, we don't know what the sort of cascade of effects is. So the one down below, obviously, is the behavioral change. And can you all see what's kissing noses with the cat? The mouse. The mouse. Is that normal? No. Not at all. So interestingly enough, mice um, have an instinctive fear of cat odor. Brand new mice, um, the minute their eyes are open, if you put rags soaked in basically cat pheromones in a cage with them, the mice will react in a fearful way. It's instinctive. Why is it instinctive? Because for, you know, millions of generations, the mice who were not, who were afraid of cats survived. They passed on their genes. So there's this deep instinctive fear of cat smell in mice. So what's going on there? Well, there is, who here has heard anything about pregnant women shouldn't change the litter box? Okay. Um, have, well, if any of you have had a mom or an older sister or an aunt who was pregnant when you were conscious of things going on in the world, um, one of the big first things they always say is pregnant women, oh, you can't change the litter box. Cats transmit a parasite called toxoplasmosis. Um, now, toxoplasmosis is transmissible to humans as well. In humans, it causes... Um, it can cause pretty serious birth defects. It can also in, um, cause miscarriages. And so they even tell pregnant women um, to be careful gardening. If your garden has, like, neighborhood cats who wander through, 
Um, when I was when I was pregnant with my daughter, I wore and I hate wearing gloves gardening. I feel like some sort of big, thick, clotty thing that can't really do anything. Um, I wore gloves gardening because all it takes is getting some remnants of cat feces under your nails and then eating something. It's a pretty easy transmission vector. Um, and it, like I said, it can cause everything from fetal death to uh, blindness. And my husband's uncle actually is blind in one eye because his mom contracted toxoplasmosis when he was pregnant. Um, they, this was in the 50s. They didn't know about it then. You know somebody who's... No, okay. Um, but it's a serious thing. Well, here's the weird part. Where do cats get it? Remember, all, all diseases and all parasites have a vector of some sort. Aha! Mice! Mice are the intermediate host. Cats are the final host. So the cat eats the mouse that has the parasite, and then the cat gets the parasite, and then the cat poops out the parasite, and then the parasite ends up on vegetation, which the mouse eats, and the mouse gets the parasite, and then the cat, you know, you get the picture. It's a big, it's the circle of life. Here's the weird part. You take mice who are infected with toxoplasmosis and they have no fear of cats. They will run right up to a cat. They will do that. What research has found is it appears to be a permanent change in the structure of their brain. So even if you treat them, because you can treat people for toxoplasmosis. Um, there are anti-protozoans. There, there, there are drugs that will kill the, the um, because it's not a bacteria, it's a protozoan. There are drugs that will kill it anyway. If you take those mice and you treat them and you get them completely clear of the disease and they have no more of the parasite in their system, they're still not afraid of cats. It makes a permanent change in their brain. They have also linked um, chronic toxoplasmosis infection in humans, and I think it was specifically in females, with higher rates of suicide. Whoa, this parasite makes changes in the brain? Yeah, that's the way it looks. Um, there was an article that came out about five years ago. Some of this research was starting to come out, and it was something to the effect of um, brain-eating parasites create zombie mice. Okay, might have been a little bit overblown, a little science fiction movie-ish. But it's true, these parasites make a change in their host that changes their behavior or their structure. How could that alter a biological community? There's a lot of potential there. These are not the only two parasites that make changes in the host that change either behavior or structure. So there's this sort of trickle-down effect where, in fact, one little parasite in the bloodstream of a bunch of individuals can cause pretty widespread change. I'm going to cut this one off here and switch gears for a second. <laughs>